Here we're going to key out one of the conifers that's really important to know in the Pacific Northwest. So we know it's a conifer and not a broadleaf tree by our linear persistent needles. So if we turn to the key to North American conifers, our first choices are, are the leaves scale-like, all-like, or both? The arrangement may be decusit, in other words, in twos, ternate, which would be in threes, or spirally arranged, or leaves not as above. They may be linear, acicular, or lancelate. Spirally arranged may be two-ranked or ternate, may be in fascicles or on spur shoots. So we can see that these leaves are linear in appearance, and that takes us to number seven. So if we turn to seven, most or all needles are born in clusters, either in fascicles or on spur shoots, or all needles appear to be born individually connected to the twig separately from each other. So if we look closely at the needles, we can see that they are all born individually on this twig. So they're separate from one another. So that takes us to number 10. Our next choice is needles deciduous, soft and flexible. They fall from the tree still attached to the twig. Cones woody and irregularly round not native to the Pacific Northwest, or needles are evergreen, stiff with a waxy cuticle. So these needles are definitely evergreen. They are not deciduous. So that takes us to number 11. For 11, single needles born on distinct woody pegs. Pegs may be rounded or squared off. Needles not ternate or needles not as above may be single or ternate. So if we look closely at the needles, we see that they are not born on woody pegs. So that this is definitely not a spruce or picea that we're looking at. So we'll choose the needles not as above may be single or ternate. And that takes us to number 13. Leaves ternate, in other words, in threes, fall from the twig individually no leaves are scale-like and berry-like cones. That would be the juniper. This is most definitely not a juniper. So leaves not ternate, shape linear or lancelet. And again, we have those linear leaves. That takes us to number 14. So for 14, leaves long, usually greater than one and a half inches, distinctly flat and very sharp or lancelet not native to Oregon or Washington, or leaves shorter, usually <clears throat> less than one and a half inches long and not sharp to the touch. So these leaves are not particularly sharp to the touch. And that takes us to number 15. When removed from the twig, leaves do not leave clean leaf scar, but tear into twig, leaves always two ranked, fall from the tree, still attached to twig. Cones are cylindrical with thick, but flimsy peltate scales. So first of all, if we remove a needle from the twig, <clears throat> um, that first choice says that they do not leave a clean leaf scar. This actually left a very clean leaf scar. Also, these leaves are definitely not too ranked. So too ranked would be more if this was the central spine and I had a leaf coming off of either direction. They look fairly flat. <clears throat> so they're definitely not as above. Um, so our other choice is needles leave a distinct leaf scar when removed from the twig. And again, where I removed that needle, you can see a very distinct leaf scar. That takes us to choice number 16. Terminal buds are large, sharp pointed, reddish brown, and have distinct imbricate or overlapping scales. The cones have three pronged bracts that are longer than scales, 
and the leaf scar is half raised. And that would be our Pseudosuga <clears throat> menziesia, um, in other words, our Douglas fir. So even though we can't, if we look closely at our, for our terminal buds, they do not have, they're not large, sharp pointed reddish brown with those distinct imbricate scales. So we're definitely not looking into Douglas fir here. And there are other clues that also tell this that this is not a Douglas fir. So buds and cones, not as above. Takes us to number 17. So terminal buds are large, rounded, and covered with wax, resin, or needles, typically in threes or more. Leaf scars are large, round, and flat, and the cones are large, upright, and barrel-shaped with deciduous scales. Now this is a very young tree and we don't have any cones on the tree, but we can look at the description of the two. So our choices are, is this an ABs or true fir, or is this a taxus yew? So our other choice is buds not as above, inconspicuous, leaves pointed, but not sharp, no bloom on either surface, needles flat in cross section, but may have revolute margins, leaf base parallels the twig. Well, we definitely have bloom on the surface of these needles and these leaves are not sharply pointed. Um, so we know for sure that we're not looking at our taxis or our U. So this is indeed an ABs or true fir. And typical of your ABs, it has these linear leaves that are somewhat rounded at the apex. So we'll turn to the key to our ABs. And again, most of our ABs have leaves that are linear. They're born singly, spirally arranged around the stem, but usually clustered on the upper side of the twig. So even though technically these leaves are, where they attach to the stem is spiraled, the appearance on the twig can often look either two ranked or three ranked. Um, so in some species, two ranked, somewhat stiff, flattened or thickened in cross section, lines of white stomato bloom on one or both surfaces. So if we look at the underside, we see two very distinct bands of stomato bloom on the undersurface. And also we'll see that there's distinct stomato bloom on the upper surface, which will be a key characteristic in figuring out what kind of an ABs or what kind of true fur we're looking at. So the lines of white stomato bloom on one or both surfaces, again, another key characteristic of our ABs. So they are sessile. In other words, the foliage is slightly constricted at the base and lacks a petiole. So if you look at where those needles attach to the twig, there's not a, a petiole that they're sticking up on. And then the leaves on cone bearing branches are often pointed and upswept. So if we had the flowers and cones on this tree, we would see that the flowers are monoecious in our abies. Staminate cones are pendant, cylindrical, born on the underside of the branches in the middle or upper crown, and the pistillate cones are erect. And a really key characteristic of our abies or our true firs are the cones, which are born erect, kind of like owls sitting up on trees. And they're usually found up in the upper reaches of that tree. And your abies cones will typically not fall as one unit from the tree but they will dehiss scale by scale. So each of those scales will break away and then be able to disperse fairly easily by the wind a distance from that parent tree. So it's a great dispersal mechanism for the ABs or the true firs. So those upright cones that are often fairly barrel shaped sitting up on the tree are really important characteristics. The twigs are typically smooth and a bit shiny or pubescent. And then the leaf scars are large, round, and flat with the buds round to ovoid. So again, that leaf scar that we have here is fairly rounded and flat. All right, so we know that we're looking at an ABs or a true fur. So now the question is, which of the ABs could this be? There are um, six of the 11 
species in the United States are actually native to the Pacific Northwest. So we'll see which of the six this could be. So if we turn to the key for our Pacific Northwest firs, our first choice is leaves green above, no bloom on upper surface, or leaves have bloom on upper surface. So if I look at the upper surface of each of these needles, I will see that it indeed has bloom on the upper surface. So not just on the underside, but also the upper surface has bloom or some auto bloom. So that takes us to number three. So for choice number three, the base of is shaped like a hockey stick or L shaped and the terminal twigs, not reddish brown or the base of the needles, mostly straight terminal twigs, not reddish brown and often olive colored. So if we look at the base and where those needles attach to the stem, we can see that there's a bit of a bend. So it's bent like <clears throat> that bottom part of a hockey stick um, rather than just perpendicularly attached to the stem. So we have our hockey stick needles. That takes us to number four. So needle cross section grooved along the midrib, cone bracts longer than the scales, turns up at ends, ranges through Washington, Oregon, Northern California, or the needle and cross section is usually ridged along the midrib and the cone bracts are shorter than the scales and the range would be somewhere from um, California into Southern Oregon. So for one thing, we know that we're up here in Gresham, Oregon, so not down in Southern Oregon. So the range is one strong clue but again, remember we're on a campus where we could be looking at ornamental species. Um, so here we have, if we look at the needle, we will see that the cross section is grooved along that mid rib. So the mid rib has a groove and that is characteristic of our Abies procera. So with Abies procera, really, really important to note that you have stomato bloom on both the underside of the needles and the upper surface. They are three ranked. So you have that third rank that comes up in the middle and often that third rank will curl backwards. So almost like um, a beginning ski jumper that starts to lean forward and at the last second panics and kind of leans back. And that's what your Abies procera does. So that needle um, on the upper surface of the midrib kind of curves back. And then the upper surface of those needles has distinct bands of stomato bloom. Some other key characteristics for your Abies procera, if we had cones on our tree here, you would see that the cones are about four to six inches in length and about two inches in diameter. They're cylindrical and barrel shaped, typical of your ABs. And they're, they will dehiss scale by scale, typical of the ABs. But those cones are typically an olive brown in color and the bracts are longer than the cone scales. So the bracts on our ABs procera are a really important identifying characteristic. And sometimes when you're driving along, even it, 55 miles an hour or so, you can see those bracts um, from a distance on the cone scales. They'll almost look kind of like a hedgehog sitting up on your Abies procera.